In this tutorial, we'll learn how to fill a glass jar or a box with candies or any such small objects using rigid body physics in Blender. It's going to be fun and interesting, so let's start with Blender. We will first change this default cube into a spherical object using some modifiers since it looks a little better than a perfect sphere. So let's add a subdivision surface modifier. We have to use the Catmull Clark option and we can change the levels to 3. Then we'll enable the Shade Smooth option from here. Now, we have to compare the size of this sphere with the size of our jar that we want to fill with candies. The size of this sphere should be perfect, it should not be too big or too small. And to see the inside of this jar, select the jar and go to the Object Properties. Scroll down to the section called Viewport Display, and here, change this display option to Wireframe Mode. Now we can see our sphere through the glass wall, and it's too big compared to the glass jar, so we have to reduce its scale factors in the object properties, maybe to 0.35. And we will also move it up by say one unit so that the sphere does not touch the bottom of the jar. Now we can hide this jar object temporarily, and let's create a new collection here, and then move this model into the new collection. In the next step, we have to create three duplicate copies of the sphere. Let's first move it along the x-axis by a small amount like this. Now press Shift D to create a duplicate copy and move it to the other side by the same amount. Then select both of them together, create a duplicate set, and rotate this new set by 90 degrees so that we get four such spheres oriented in a circular fashion. Now press 7 to go to the top view mode, and let's unhide the jar object. We have to ensure that the spheres are all within the opening of this jar, otherwise they might hit the jar instead of falling inside. Now we'll create a spiral with these spheres in a vertical fashion. And we know that the Z location of this first sphere is set to 1, so select the second sphere and change its Z location to say 2. Same goes for the third and the fourth sphere. We are doing this in order to ensure that all spheres fall inside the jar. When we play the animation, we don't want them to be deflected. Now select these spheres together and ensure that one of them is active. This orange color means currently it is the active object. Now go to the object menu and click on join. But we should better call them as spheres instead of cube. So let's change this name to sphere starting with one. Then go to the modifiers tab, minimize the subdivision and add another modifier called array modifier. We need to remove this X offset and instead use the Z offset since we want to place them vertically. Let's go to the front view mode. We can see that a second set is created here, but we need some more gap between these two sets. So let's increase this Z offset to say 1.2. Now you can add more such sets by increasing this count value. Let's change this to 50 for 200 spheres. Then apply this modifier and switch over to the edit mode from here. Press A to select all. Then under the mesh menu, under separate, select separate by loose parts. Now we can go back to the object mode. And while all the objects are still selected, go to the object menu and under set origin, set origin to geometry. And we want these spheres to be instances of the same object to reduce the file size. So go to the object menu and under link data, we have to select link object data. And we want them to share the same material. So we'll also link their materials. Now we'll add the physics for these spheres. So select anyone, maybe the first one and go to the physics tab. We have to enable the rigid body physics for this sphere and it should be an active type rigid body. Then in the collision shape, we can select the sphere option because they almost resemble a sphere and the physics will run faster. We can customize other things, maybe in the surface response, we can increase the bounciness to 0.2. If you are not very familiar with these settings, you can watch our tutorials on rigid body physics. We have created several tutorials on this and the links are given below in the video description. So we have enabled rigid body physics just for this one. Now we'll copy the same settings to all other spheres. So while the first sphere is selected, press the shift key and go to the end of this collection and select all of them together. Then again, go to the object menu and from the rigid body options, select copy from active. Then we need to also set up this physics for the jar. So minimize this and bring back the jar object. Then select it and enable the rigid body physics, but it should be a passive type object because it does not move. And we have to select the mesh option in the collision shape because it is a hollow object, so it won't work correctly if we select anything other than the mesh option. Let's also add some bounciness for this jar and our rigid body setup is done. We have to bake the physics, but let's first confirm if it works by playing the animation. 
So we see that the spheres are falling down and filling the jar, but some of the spheres can hit the jar and deflect from the top of the container, like this, so we can use a guiding object to stop any such deflections. Like in this composition, we have added a cylinder around the neck of the glass jar, this is nothing but a simple cylinder with the top and the bottom surface removed. We need to enable rigid body physics for this cylinder, and it should be passive type like the jar object. We need to also change the collision shape to mesh, because this is a hollow cylinder. Then go to the scene tab, and expand the section called rigid body world. We need to bake our physics from here, but first we have to ensure that this end frame number matches with the end frame of our scene. So if our scene length is say 300, we have to change this end frame number to 300 as well, and finally, we can bake the physics from here. It will take some time, depending upon the number of objects in the scene length, but once complete, we can play the animation to verify if everything now looks perfect. Later we need to create a transparent material for this glass jar, so that we can see the candies, but let's first do some cleanup for this scene. So go to the last frame of your composition, and box select everything, with one active object. Then go to the object menu, and under rigid body, select apply transformation. Now again go to the object menu, and again from the rigid body, select the remove option. It will remove the rigid body physics from all these objects, and make everything permanent, so they will remain like this, for whichever frame number we go to. Now we can remove this cylinder, and we can also remove some of the candies from the top that are extra. So we have our glass jar ready with the candies, but sometimes you may need to move this jar along with the candies within the jar object. So again select everything together, and then select this jar at the end, so that it is in orange, which means it is the active object. Then press Ctrl P to bring this menu, and select this object keep transform option, to set this jar as the parent to all the objects inside. Now the candies will move along with the jar, so our requirement is fulfilled, we have to just create some suitable materials for these objects. Let's first turn on the rendered view mode, and then change the display mode back to textured. Now we need to create a new material for this glass jar, that has a principled BSDF. We'll change this roughness to 0, and we'll also change the transmission weight to 1. Then add a value node to this thickness socket, and we need to also make two more changes. So in the materials tab, first enable this ray trace transmission, and then change this thickness mode to slab. Now select any one of the candies, and you need to create a new material for this object. Here you can choose whatever color you like, and for the candy-like reflections, reduce the roughness close to zero. Then enable a subsurface effect, by changing this weight to 1, all the candies will get the same material as they have a linked data. And if you are using EV, you need to turn on the ray tracing option from here. So our glass jar is ready with the candies, and of course we can spend more time on these materials. For example, instead of a single red color, if we want candies in various different colors, we need to make some changes in the shader node tree. We can use an object info node, that has got an output socket with random values, connected to a color ramp node where we have set up five different colors, and it goes to this base color. We can also use a bump node for the normal input, to have some uneven surface characteristics for our candies. Now, we can see that the candies have got various different colors. So this is how you can fill any container with small size objects, and have fun with rigid body physics in Blender. If you are a member of this channel, you can also download the original blend file of this composition. So I hope you like this tutorial, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.